unfortunately, what the congregation has done to a detriment to our pastors is put them up on a pedestal and say, oh, these people are perfect. This is Equip and Engage, a podcast by Subsplash, exploring how ministry, technology, and innovation come together to equip churches around the world to engage their communities. Hey, and welcome to Equip and Engage. My name is Chris, and I'm part of the team at Subsplash that produces this podcast. You know, it's been a unique and challenging season for us all these last couple of years for society as a whole, and for certain groups or sub sets of people in particular, one of those would be pastors. Church leaders have just been through it these last couple years. That's why some of the latest stats that we read show that as many as two in five or maybe even more pastors right now are seriously thinking about leaving full-time vocational ministry. That's crazy. And scripture tells us to honor pastors, to honor shepherds, those leading the church. I mean, think about the Apostle Paul in 1 Timothy. He says the laborer deserves his wages. Now that's more of an argument for financially compensating the pastor. But he also says that elders, those leading the church, should be considered worthy of double honor. We should give honor to those who are leading our congregations. Again, in Galatians, those who are taught the word, so those who are on the receiving and benefiting from preaching, must share all good things with the one who teaches them. And the Bible also recognizes that this is a unique burden. That's why the honor is due. The book of James says, those who teach will be judged with greater strictness. That is a burden and a pressure upon pastors. And the bottom line is that we should all be mindful of how our pastors are doing. And that's what this episode today is all about. I'm really excited to queue up a conversation with Marty Sawyers of Full Strength Network. In the next couple moments together, we're going to be asking him questions like, what's it like to be a pastor right now? If you're not a pastor, have you thought about that? What would it be like to be in those shoes, leading a church, making all the decisions that pastors have made these last couple years, navigating all of the difficult conversations they've had to navigate, which they maybe weren't trained for? What's it like right now? Another question we'll ask him, what's the most important aspect of a pastor's well-being or of anyone's well-being really, but especially a pastor? Is it spiritual well-being? Is it emotional? Is it uh, financial, relational? Is it something else? What should we be thinking about in terms of priority about the most important way pastors can be thriving right now and how we can support them? And then lastly, all to support and honor pastors, what might need to change, if anything, about how we look at discipleship, how we look at ministry, in order to support pastors' well-beings. Are our current models really not doing anybody's service when it comes to being steady, being healthy, leading well? Marty has some really great insight into all of these questions and they're key questions. So I can't wait for you to hear from Marty as he impacts them for us. So let's get started from Full Strength Network. Here's Marty Sawyers. Well, Marty, thank you so much for uh, joining us today on the Subsplash podcast and uh, representing Full Strength Network, which is a, a great partner of Subsplash. We're honored to have you here on the podcast today, hear more about your story and more about the resources that you provide to pastors. Yeah, thanks so much, Justin. It's, a, it's an honor to join you here. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, listen, uh, mental wellness, spiritual wellness, overall holistic wellness, these are conversations that have entered the mainstream of churches and uh, maybe you and I could argue that uh, this should be a conversation that should have been happening much longer than it has been. And probably COVID helped to accelerate some of that conversation in which it accelerated many things within the, uh, the, the church framework. But I'm glad we're talking about it. And Full Strength Network, we're going to find out a little bit more about what you provide and how you resource churches and leaders specifically. But let's talk a little bit about Full Strength Network first as an organization. How did it get started? How did you come to get involved with Full Strength Network? And um, and then we'll talk about your mission statement, your vision, which is pretty powerful. Sure. Well, full strength. It was, it's actually a, an interesting story about six or seven years ago, it was birthed out of an organization called Brotherhood Mutual and Brotherhood is the largest property casualty insurer of churches in the country. And they're based in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And six or seven years ago, uh, Mark, the president and chairman, he has an executive council and they were planning their hundredth year anniversary. And they basically said, hey, instead of throwing a big party for ourselves, what could we do? And the idea was, hey, whatever we do, it has to help pastors. And so this idea of well-being, pastoral care, 
I mean, it wasn't a new concept, but they said, what could we do to help that? And this idea of full strength and and giving pastors counseling and, and well-being support and mental health support was birthed out of that. And that was where Full Strength was launched. So as a standalone nonprofit. Wow. And uh, and then, you know, I, I found out about it, uh, oh, a couple of years ago during COVID. You know, I was uh, I was serving as executive pastor at a mega church here in Chandler, Arizona. I'd been here for about 10 years. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were sitting in the pool in July because it's <laughs> hot. And that's what you do in, in Arizona in July. Mm-hmm. And my wife says, hey, are you going to do this forever, this, this job? <laughs> and uh, I said, I don't know. But whatever I do next, it has to support the local church and church leaders because that's what I'm passionate about. Yeah. And then a few months later, I get a call from an executive uh, search firm that I know with this profile for the president and CEO of this organization called Full Strength Network. And as I read the profile and, and started, uh, you know, interview, you know, interviewing and talking with them, I just felt that, okay, this is what God wants me to do. It's mm-hmm. just, I, I love the, I love the vision. I love what they're accomplishing and trying to do for, for pastors and church staff. So, uh, then in March of 2021, that's when I, I was asked to come lead the organization. That's awesome. The full stream, full steam ahead. It sounds like, um, yep. and actually let's talk a little bit about one, your, your vision statement. Um, it actually, uh, really references what you just mentioned, which is this, that healthy pastors lead healthy churches and healthy churches change the world. I think God's plan A to spread the gospel through the local church. Yeah. And uh, so I don't think there's a plan B. It wasn't like, you know, Jesus going, hey, I'm going to try this church thing. I'm going to establish my church. And then if that doesn't work out, I'll come back and do something else. And mm-hmm. so this idea <laughs> of Hey, the church is kind of the hope of the world of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. So it's, it's up to us to help the people who have been called to lead that, that mission of the church. And so, and we also know that, you know, when leaders get better, when leaders are healthy, when, you know, Justin, when you're healthy, when you're leading yourself well, you're Mm -hmm. probably leading everything else in your life well. So that idea of healthy pastors, healthy church staff, that's going to go, you know, turn into healthy churches and that's going to actually change the world for for God's glory. Yeah, that's really good. You know, over the years in, in ministry myself, this this concept of we are better as ministers when we are operating out of a place of overflow and not trying to manufacture those good qualities that we hope for. Sure. Um, but if we're working out of overflow, everything is going to be much stronger, much healthier, much better. It sounds like that's what you're helping pastors and leaders to do. I think in general, pastors and church staff, and you probably know this because you were in ministry, they're so focused on serving and helping others, mm. they they forget or they ignore taking care of themselves. Yes. And uh, that's where we get into some of the issues that uh, we, we find. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, let's, let's paint a picture uh, from your perspective on what the average pastor's experience is today in 2022 as we're recording this. What, what is it like? Uh, what are you hearing? What are you seeing? What are you witnessing? What is it like to be a pastor right now in today's climate? I think in general, overall, I think they're exhausted. Hmm. They're just tired. Um, it, I think leading is hard and I, leading in a church, I believe, is harder. Yeah. Um, and then you have all these things and I mean, there, we have, we have research and statistics to back all this up, but all of it was hard before COVID. And then we go through two years of unprecedented, you know, just experience and shutting churches down and, and basically arguing with people that you think are on your side and disagreeing, you know, half your church disagreed with every decision you made. Didn't matter. I mean, you're, you're making these decisions out of what you think is the wisest thing to do and the best thing for the church. And half your church disagrees and lets you know it all the time. <laughs> and so coming out of just getting through COVID and getting through the season that we just went through, they're tired. Everyone's mm-hmm. tired. I mean, they had, to, they had to shift. They had to change their model. They had to do things they might not have been comfortable with. Yeah. I mean, 95% of the churches in the country are less than 200 in attendance. So yes. they probably didn't have big online presence and a lot of tech staff and things like that. And they had to learn how to pivot and do things that they weren't comfortable with and do things that they had never really thought they were going to have to do. And now that's what they're in. And they kind of mm. get through it. And guess what? It, it's not a whole lot better. 
we're, we're out of, now we, we just have, we have other issues that we're dealing with and other things that the church is under fire about. And so they're just tired, they're exhausted. Mm. And so that, that's what, in general, what we're seeing and experiencing as we go around the country. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. You know, I, even thinking before COVID, because you'd mentioned that, um, you know, Full Strength Network has existed, obviously, before the, the COVID era, if you want to call it that. Sure. Where, where, you know, you'd mentioned that exhaustion was something that pastors were already feeling. Where, was, there, was that the same thing just uh, accelerated because of COVID? Or did you, or do you find that this exhaustion really is a new, really more of a new facet that people are having to wrestle with in a unique way? No, I, I think it's it's been around. I think COVID just accelerated it and brought it to the forefront. You mentioned a, a little while ago about, hey, we're finally talking about well-being and mental health within the church. Yeah. Before, we didn't talk about it. It was there. We just don't want to talk about it because there was such a stigma around mental health, raising your hand to ask for help, yeah. um, things like that. I mean, yes. we, we, we celebrate athletes you know, about, hey, hey, they're talking about their mental health and they have, they have sports psychologists and nutritionists and all these other coaches. And then when a pastor or church staff member raises their hand to say, hey, I'm in a little bit of trouble or I need to talk to somebody, we look at them like they're, something's wrong with them. Hmm. And uh, as opposed to going, hey, let's get you the help you need or the support you need or, and, and, and sometimes they lose their job over it. Yeah. And so I'm glad we're talking about it and we're, we're trying to change the culture around mental health well-being within a church and church staff. We're trying to change this, the culture of church staff to make this be a, a normalized conversation. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so let's talk about how uh, Full Strength Network actually sure. looks at pastoral well-being. I know that you, as you and I have talked in the past, um, you, you guys look at it in terms of facets or maybe the different lens in which you look at that holistic uh, well-being is, is approached. Maybe describe a little bit about what that looks like from your perspective. Sure. From, well, we know that there are, and it's accepted in the, in the you know, general well-being space, that there are six domains of well-being. And those are spiritual, emotional, relational, uh, physical, financial, and then mental slash intellectual. Those are the mm -hmm. six domains that are accepted in this space, well-being space. And we focus on all six of those. Hmm. Um, with all the different resources that we provide and and give to uh, give to our pastor church staff members, out of those six that you mentioned, and all of those are are uh, incredibly critical. Which, and as you mentioned, they're really interdependent of one another. Are, are there are there any that you um, that you try to approach first, or that you would say be maybe the most foundational, or is it really as people come, you are assessing in real time where somebody's struggling, and you'll pivot based on what you see the most pressing need. Sure. Well, it, it's it's individual because you you yourself sitting where you are right now, you might be great in four or five of those areas, but maybe you are up to your eyeballs in debt and it is stressing you out yeah. and you don't know what to do. Yep. Well, that financial stress is affecting everything else in your life, whether mm. you realize it or not. Um, physical. I mean, everyone wants to be in better shape, lose a few pounds, things like that. It affects you. Um, your, the mental component, uh, the intellectual, if you are under stress, anxiety, your depression, um, like I said, half your church hates you because you decided to do something or say something or not say something, you're under that and there you have to deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, those things, it, it all depends on, on what you need and we'll address whatever that need is in those six areas. Hmm. Uh, so w what are some of the qualities then? So you, you, you talk with uh, hundreds, uh, thousands of pastors and ministries, uh, people that come to you and, and all, and by the way, you know, our friends are over at Barna, um, you know, have put out this incredible stat. It's, uh, and when I say incredible, I don't mean that in a positive way, but, but just within the last couple of months, it's even uh, heightened from their original poll a year ago that 42% of pastors want to quit today, feel overwhelmed and, and burned out and want to, want to find a different vocation. Sure. Um, and so these kinds of conversations are critical in terms of the future of what the church should look like. Right. And that was actually seriously considering the 42% are seriously considering quitting. That's not even the percentage of considering. So it's over 50% of yes. people that are in ministry that are considering change and not just changing churches, just getting out of ministry. 
And yeah. that's what scares, that's what scares me is that, um, this generation and this, this, uh, can see just an exodus of, of, of ministry leaders, pastors, um, people that are, you know, serving the church and, and carrying out the mission of the church. So let's talk about that for a second, because in all of the different, you know, uh, personalities that come to you, giftings, you know, the, 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 there is such a, a really neat uh, array of people that God calls into, into leading churches. Are there any kind of common threads or qualities within pastors that you have seen or that you uh, really believe that uh, if, if we can get these things right, this really will represent uh, those who can overcome the present challenges in ministry and, and lead the church into a healthy future? Is there anything that you see in there that, that people even listening to this today can think of, gosh, if I just, even in all of my issues and I, I need to get help, I need to, if I have these couple of things, I, I, can, I can make it for the long haul. Sure. I don't know if there's any one specific thing. I think it's being honest enough and being self-aware enough that <laughs> you might not have it all together. And and this is where the stigma and the of uh, the conversation around mental health comes in. And because somebody says like, "Well, there's nothing wrong with me." You're right. There's nothing wrong with you. That and I think that's when people talk about counseling and mental health. They think you're coming. Oh, I'm broken. Something. You know, I I'm clinically depressed. I, that that's what we're trying to change that conversation about. It's like, you're right. You might not be clinically depressed. That, that's fantastic. But where are you today and where are you trying to go? Yeah. And uh, maybe we can help you in that area, or maybe we can get you some expert um, support in a specific area. Not necessarily, in, it might not be mental health. It, I mean, that's the thing. Not everyone is struggling with that. And that's why we offer a, a wide you know variety of, of services, um, expert, um, expert resources in these areas to help them in whatever area. But I, I think that self-awareness of mm. saying, you know what? Um, I, I mentioned earlier athletes. Okay. The best athletes in the world don't get to that point and then go, okay, I don't need my, I don't need a coach anymore. <laughs> I don't need a nutritionist anymore. I don't need yeah. a sports psychologist anymore. They go, no, in order for me to maintain this level, I need to keep doing that. Mm -hmm. And so I think looking at it, I guess maybe the one quality or the one idea that if pastors took a long-term approach, because the idea is, hey, you didn't get into ministry to not finish well. That I mean, that is, you want to finish well. Whether it's, hey, I, I got in the ministry when I'm 55, or mm -hmm. I got in the ministry when I'm, it was in college and I was drawn to you know ministry back then, is... It's a long-term approach. So what do I need to do to, to get at a specific level and then stay healthy for a, for a long period of time? Um, so those, I think, are some, I don't know if they're qualities, but those ideas of, hey, let's, let's take a long-term approach. You're right. It might, not be, it might not be a mental health component, but it might be something else. Yeah. No, that's really good. I mean, I hear you saying then if, if you really could boil it down to a, a handful of, of qualities, maybe then for individuals, it would be humility and self-awareness. <laughs> I think those are, and those are good things to have. Uh, like, are, listen, I, mean, I need help and I'm willing to admit it. And what do I do to, to make this right? No shame in saying that I need, I need to pause and reflect. And Well, well this is a discipleship path, basically. Yes, it right. is, it, That's it right. Is, it, the, the, discipleship is not a individual sport. Christianity mm -hmm. is not, I mean, the church is not an individual sport. It's a team sport. You do yeah. this in community. And the only way you can grow and mature and, and look more like Christ is you do that with other, other people or with other resources or with other people to help you. It, it's why it's so critical. Whenever you go to any church in the country, it is the, they want you to get involved because we all know how important it is when you're in community, what that will do to you, your family, and help, how that helps in your whole discipleship path. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so let's, let's talk, let's now take it to maybe the organizational level then for, for, again, from your perspective and estimation, um, because you're, you're, you're talking with a lot of people on a regular basis. Um, are there any things uh, about the current maybe model or systems of uh, let, let's say the Western church or more specifically the American church um, that you think maybe would be good to, to relook at or to shift or change that could be adding into some of these pressures that we're seeing today? 
there are, I think everything should always be looked at. I mean, yeah. you should, you know, I, 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 this is not a ri an original thought. It is, you know, you, you, uh, you marry the mission and you date the model. You know, it, it, sure. church looks very different today than it did 25 years ago. It does. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the, the mission of the church hasn't changed. The gospel mm -hmm. message hasn't changed. How we do it might have changed a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so I think, I think everyone should always at least be with open hands looking at, hey, how can we do this a little differently or a little better? Or how can we, re how can I reach my neighbor? Why would they even consider having a, a spiritual conversation or coming to church with me, you know, now as opposed to, and I think, I think non-believers, they do want to have those spiritual conversations. They do yeah. want to have that faith conversation. And so I think churches, we just have to be, be mindful of that and maybe do it a little differently or be open, open to a different idea, not, not watering down the gospel, not changing the mission or yes. the idea of the gospel, but just how we present it and how we share it and how we, and how we do that. Yeah, that's really good. I mean, even, even from the subsplash side of, of, uh, you know, helping to empower churches for discipleship, oftentimes we think back even into church history where, Charles Spurgeon had ships that he, even the Apostle Paul had ships that he used to cross oceans to bring the gospel. When the microphone came out, Billy Graham took advantage of radio and microphones and was able to start getting the gospel out in massive ways, even with television. Um, the inception of things like digital apps and websites and even podcasts that we're recording now, these are not substitutions for the, the highly relational aspect of the gospel. But these are additional tools and technologies um, you know, that we trust partners, that churches trust like Subsplash. Why wouldn't we trust if we're going to trust other organizations to build out, you know, platforms and things like that for us and, and allow us to partner for technology? Why wouldn't we do that for the state of our soul as well? Yeah. Find these experts, partner with them and, and allow people to bring us the health, the change and the growth that we need. Absolutely. So let's let's circle back to the vision then of, of Full Strength Network again, which I'll say here, which is healthy pastors lead healthy churches and healthy churches change the world. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Marty, is at stake if we don't pursue this vision? Take your local church that you go to in your community where you live. Mm -hmm. If that disappeared, your yeah. community is worse off for that. Whether, whether a pastor or a church likes it or not, the pastor and the church is the moral compass of that community. Mm -hmm. Whether you agree with the gospel or not, Everyone looks at the in majority, look at the church. And if they're doing, okay, just, just say good things, they're feeding the poor, they're helping, they're giving backpacks out to kids that don't have, stuff. Mm -hmm. they're doing things to affect the community that actually is actually sharing the gospel in yeah. some works. And that allows them to have relationships with people in that community to then tell, Hey, this is why we do some of those things because mm -hmm. of our belief in Jesus Christ. So if, if pastors aren't healthy, if, if ministry leaders and church staff are not healthy, those things get diminished, those things go away, those things go away. And then the general community, the general, the city, that community, that state, those things suffer. So that is why it's so important yeah. is to have healthy pastors, healthy church leaders, healthy churches, because that affects so much more than the people who call that church their their home. Yeah, so good. You know, as we as we look then to uh, kind of the way forward in this conversation when it comes to well-being and you know and wholeness, um, you know, what is there is there any mistakes that we just can't afford to make? Any any things that we should not overlook? I know we've talked about humility and self awareness and the sure. necessity of this, but um, you know, what 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 are some things that you think? Listen, these are these these are deal breakers to some degree. Yeah. I think that idea, I mean, maybe it touches on humility. Um, I mean, we all have, we all have pride. Um, <laughs> you know, C.S. Lewis always, you know, wrote that, you know, the pride is the greatest sin. Um, mm. But when we think we can do it on our, on our own, when we think we can, you know, power through it, bury it down, you know, just bury it down deeper and I'll deal with it later. Mm. Uh, we know we know how unhealthy that is, both f physically and mentally, when yeah. we do things like that. Um, raise your hand 
every, everyone needs, I mean, why do we go to conferences? Why do we listen to podcasts? Why do we listen to experts in their field? Because we know that we can learn and get better for that. Why mm -hmm. wouldn't we do it in these areas as well? Why mm -hmm. wouldn't we? Hey, if, if I am struggling with something from my past, why wouldn't I talk to a counselor? If I am, if I'm struggling with my team today and we're trying to grow and do certain things and, and we're trying to figure out strategy, why wouldn't I talk to a leadership coach? Why wouldn't I talk to somebody who's an expert in strategic planning? Yep. Why wouldn't I do that? Um, so the, those are the things. It's like, that's what we got to do. It's like, raise your hand, ask for help. We, mm -hmm. we do it in different ways. I think we just have to get over this mindset or this stigma of, hey, if I raise my hand, somebody's going to know. Well, yeah, guess what? Sure. We already we already know. Yeah, we already know. Your staff, your staff already knows. We yeah. sit, your your congregation already knows. Yes. Um, now, you, what what unfortunately what the congregation has done to a detriment to our pastors is put them up on a pedestal and say, "Oh, these people are perfect." Yeah. And they they are experts at everything. And guess what? They're not. Mm -hmm. They're not expert. They're not experts at everything. And guess what? They have struggles just like you. They have rebellious kids, just like you. They mm -hmm. have financial pressure, pr pressures and health pressures and in-laws and whatever else, just like everyone else that we're mm -hmm. all dealing with and they're dealing with. And so you can't expect them to be perfect. And you can't also expect them to be available 24 seven at, you know, whenever you think you need your pastor or I have a question or I, I think they should be at my house or I think they should be at this hospital or they should be at this event. That's unfair. That's unfair to their family. Mm -hmm. They, they are Christ followers first. Then they are husband, wife, you know, son, daughter. Then down the line, they're, they're pastor, ministry leader, children's director, all of that. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think we, Unfortunately, and, and pastors and ministry leaders have done this. I did it while I was serving a church. It became this unhealthy sense of responsibility that you put on yourself hmm. that I'm the only one that can do this, or this is going to fall apart if I'm not there, or this is too, this is no, too important. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take more time away from my family. You, you, you can't do that. There are seasons that that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And any, anyone who has worked over Easter or Christmas season knows that there are seasons that you're going to be a little busier mm -hmm. um, than others, but yeah. that can't be the every day, every week. This is how ministry is. Yeah. So that's where you get unhealthy church leaders. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. What are you, what are you most hopeful for or excited about uh, when it comes to the future of the church? I mean, you just mentioned a lot of, a lot of things that, that could, you know, give cause for alarm and should in some case pause us to evaluate. But as you're talking with all of these and you're seeing people make these great steps forward and in some senses, as you, as you are working with churches across many different denominations and expressions of Christian faith, I'm sure you're seeing some really hopeful themes emerge as well. Sure. Maybe share one or two of those with us. Well, I, I think you go back to scripture and it's, there's, guess what? Jesus said we were going to have problems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that shouldn't be a surprise to us, mm -hmm. but we also know we win, we overcome mm -hmm. yeah. and, and we actually get, we're actually better for it when we go through some of these things. Now we don't have to like it, but we also have the promise that we will be better for it and God will be glorified and we will look more like Christ when we go through this. Mm -hmm. Not saying it's easy, not saying we have to just sit there and take it on the chin and put up with it. That's where organizations like Full Strength come alongside and go, okay, we know you're gonna get through it. We, it, it is worth it. The, the church is worth it. The people that you're trying to reach are worth it. The gospel, it's the most important story. It's yeah. worth it. Yes. How can we help you stay in the game and finish well? Because it's worth it. That's the exciting thing. It's like, we know, we know it's worth it. So let's, let's help you in that and help you carry out the calling that God's placed on your life. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, if somebody wants to get a hold of Full Strength and, and explore more about what you guys offer and how to actually take advantage of what you've just talked about, what's the best way for them to do that? The easiest way is just go to our website, www.fullstrength.org. So we have information on individual memberships, group memberships. It's just, it tells a little bit about our organization and how you can get involved. 
Um, so that's the, that's the easiest, quickest, best way to connect with us. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Marty, we're grateful. We're grateful for our partnership with you as an organization. Uh, Subsplash uh, is uh, very excited to offer, you know, even various promotions that we have throughout the throughout the last year or so, just to help pastors realize the value of these kind of services that are available. There are lots of tools that exist to make ministry more efficient, but there are very few tools or platforms or even people today that are invested in the same way into making sure that pastors, that leaders are whole. And, uh, and we really want to see churches thrive um, because that, that, is, that will guarantee longevity. That will guarantee that other people continue to benefit from the calling that God has placed in the lives of so many people. So we're grateful for you, grateful for what you offer. Thanks for taking time today on our podcast. And uh, we look forward to more and more collaboration down the road. All right. Thanks so much, Justin. Thanks for having me here. Thank you, Marty. Thanks to everyone for listening today. We are so honored to partner with Full Strength Network. They're doing an incredible service to pastors, incredible service to the church, and we just love the way that they are making this coaching and counseling more accessible to those who need it. As always, we have more conversations just like this one coming up really soon in the next couple of weeks. These are conversations to help pastors navigate through the unique and crazy challenges of doing ministry in a digitized age, a politicized age, an age in which it sometimes feels like you just can't win, especially on just a personal well-being level. But we are all in on the mission of the church. Full Strength Network is all in. Subsplash is all in. It is still, even now, in 2022 and always until the end of the age, the greatest source of hope and joy for our world. That is the church that Jesus has built. This is what we believe. It's what we love to talk about. So make sure you don't miss out on future episodes and subscribe to Equip and Engage wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple, Google, Spotify, somewhere else. Thanks for following along today. We'll catch you next time.